Hello and Merry Christmas. So, I hope you're having a good Christmas today. But if you're not, help has arrived. And hopefully we can look at this catalog together and um, bid farewell to Christmas 2022 by thinking about Christmas 1985. Um, you might be burned out on Christmas today, but uh, I thought... This would be on my last Christmas video of the year. It's um, Montgomery Ward 1985 Christmas Catalog. A few things to point out. Um, this is a, not mildew, but that's actually a white Christmas tree. It just was not the best placement. At the time, it might have looked better. But on an old catalog, the first thing you think when you see that is, is it's mildew. Um, but you can look and see some of the uh, popular presents on the cover like transformers and care bears um, masters of the universe cabbage patch kids um care bear or the care bear cousins so you know you get a little glimpse of that and then we go to the back and like all the other catalogs we've looked at there's an ad for you know some type of entertainment system in this case it's a 1985 vcr with a wired or wireless remote control and uh so let's go ahead and dig in and um we start with a big full page layout of care bears all the various bears you could get in 1985 um the uh this has been a fairly popular and enduring toy line um you still see Care Bears popping up all over the place. And you also get a little guide on the popular toys for Christmas. Barbie, Cabbage Patch Kids, Care Bears, Chickmunks. Um, and let me give a little context for all of these in case you're wondering. Mm, I got my tea going on here. Okay, so the Chipmunks were big because the Alvin and the Chipmunks uh, cartoon show was out and kids were watching on Saturday mornings. Um, Dr. Seuss was always kind of big. G.I. Joe, the cartoon show was going on and it was a very popular uh, action figure for kids. GoBots, there was a movie with Orson Welles doing voice work. They were the poor man's transformer. Um... Hello Kitty has always remained uh, popular to some extent. Hug a Bunch, I don't remember very much. Um, Knight Rider uh, TV show, Mask cartoon show, uh, hugely popular in 1985. Masters of the Universe cartoon show, incredibly popular and collectible. Mickey Mouse always maintained some level of popularity. Muppets was probably popular because of the incredibly popular Muppet Baby Saturday morning cartoon. Um, My Little Pony cartoon show, Chira cartoon show, Rainbow Bright I had a cartoon, I think. Um, you know, Care Bears actually, I think, started out as American Greetings mascots, and then they went from that to a cartoon to toys. Sectars, I don't remember. Sesame Street's always popular. Star Wars Ewoks, uh, there was a... A cartoon at this point for Ewoks. Tommy robots were fairly popular in the 80s. They were, you know, actual little, you know, RC robots. And then you got Transformers, Voltron, and Wuzzles. Voltron was pretty big. Okay, so this is obviously, you know, we're talking toys in this catalog. This is, you know, Nintendo was out and stuff, but... Kids still wanted toys at this point, you know, they, they weren't wanting iPads or Kindles and stuff. They wanted toys. Um, what is this letter? It says an expression of appreciation. Dear Montgomery Ward customer, in many ways, this Christmas catalog represents the end of an American tradition. As you probably heard, the Montgomery Ward catalog business will close in 1986, marking the end of a business we founded 113 years ago. 
So what you're looking at is one of the last Montgomery Ward catalogs. And this catalog went all the way back to the 1800s. I mean, this was how people on the frontier got, in some cases, their house. So he talks a little bit about reducing the merchandise. Uh, it's kind of sad to read this so far back in 1985 that this iconic catalog was ending the next year. So we get to some Care Bear Cousins. And now we get to um, stuff to outfit your kids' rooms, desks, toy cabinets, shelves, some tricycles. Uh, hmm. These are little plastic Care Bears. Bedding for children. And we have children's outfits that uh, go along with the, the cartoon characters. And we get to Mask, which was uh, pretty popular when it came out. Me and my friends really liked it. Uh, they were smaller action figures that were not scaled with Star Wars and G.I. Joe. So that probably was to its detriment because they you couldn't play with the mask figures um, with your other franchises. But what it did do was give you more of a range of accessories because it, with that smaller scale, you could have like this mountain fortress and all of these highly detailed vehicles that were basically kind of a Transformers ripoff. Um, they, it would be like a motorcycle that turns into a helicopter and so forth, you know. They weren't robots, they just transformed into another type of vehicle. Then you get your mask bedding. Uh, he wants to sleep in the sleeping bag instead of the bed. And he can even wear his mask watch. You get your mask pajamas, your mask, uh, exercise gear, sports gear, and now we get to Shira, Princess of Power. Um, they originally called it Shira, but then they dropped that and made it Princess of Power to make it more marketable to young girls, so they could have an action, sort of an action princess, you know, which was kind of a new thing. And that way, also the brilliant thing about Shira, Princess of Power, is they could play along with the He-Man figures, and you could. Your the boy and girl could play She-Ra and He-Man together and have their own castles, characters that scaled up nicely together and looked good together. So that was a very brilliant move. Um, was it uh, was it Mattel? I think that made these. Um, I think it was Mattel. Let's see. Um. I'm surprised the brand. Yeah, Mattel. Yeah, so um, that was that was pretty brilliant. It worked out. Now you got your Shira gear. I'm sorry, Princess of Power gear. Tricycles, bicycles, armor. Does this look familiar? Does this remind you of uh, the Thor, uh, Love and Thunder kind of stuff that they they're peddling nowadays? Um, sleeping, I mean, almost identical with sleeping bag with the bedding for the girls' room. And then we skip right ahead to Masters of the Universe. The same configuration, a duffel bag, a sleeping bag, bedding, curtains. And then we get to the boy line of the Mattel Eternia heroes with that classic Castle Grayskull, um, the evil horde, uh, they could ride around on this skeletal alligator crocodile thing. They This is when Masters of the Universe had gotten to its crazy point. Like when it first started a few years before, it was just like He-Man and Skeletor and Beast-Man. But then they got like Battle Damage He-Man or Power Punch He-Man. And, and, you know, they got Stinkor and Clawful and Ram Man and Faker and all of these nutty vehicles. And I mean... 
So this was, and you know, a carrying case that could hold like four of these big chunky figures. But what I will say is He-Man figures were built for play. They weren't really built for collecting and posing and or keeping in the card. You know, these these were action figures that kids played with. And then if you went to a party and I was, you know, when I was a little kid, 1982, 1983, um... My parents would go to, like, a house party. They'd <clears throat> all be out on the back porch, you know, cooking out. And me and the other boys or and kids and girls and all that, we would... Someone would have, like, P-Mans, and we'd pull them out and play with them. And they were fun to play with. And then you get your gear. Um, you have a little Castle Grayskull here. What is this? This is... Um, L, it says, um, a molded plastic clock. It's a Castle Grayskull clock with a He-Man and Skeletor on the top. And that's also, like, th that was the option. So the kid who whose parents couldn't afford the Castle Grayskull, they could get him the clock and he could use his imagination. And you got, you know, radios and, I mean, all this cool 80s stuff. And now we're going to go through the same thing we've been seeing. Um, the pajamas and sports wear for kids, bathrobes. Now we get to wuzzles, which were um, stuffed, you know, stuffed animals that really hit the country by storm in the 80s with cabbage patch kids and care bears and so forth. So we had wuzzles, uh, brand new combinations of two different animals. So they're twice as much. So they're twice as cute. I think you, maybe you could turn them inside out or something. I, I I don't remember how it worked. You'd have to ask Mary, and I really need to get Mary to review one of these catalogs, and she could explain a lot of the girl toys better because she remembers them. So, and we get to the Wuzzles bed, pajamas, the Wuzzle hygiene sets. Uh, color our art sets. Now we get to GI Joe, military themed toys with walkie talkies and duffel bags that you're actually gonna take out in the field with you, I suppose. Then we get to this amazing GI Joe stuff that no kid's parents could afford, like this aircraft carrier. I never had a friend who had this because I didn't have richy rich friends, so um, I would have loved that. My goodness, look how small the figures are on this aircraft carrier. I mean, come on. You'd buy it. How many shipwrecks would you need to buy to man this carrier? And you have fighters, an A-10, tanks, all of this fantastic G.I. Joe stuff. I think I had that, that little uh, swamp vehicle there. Um... And the figures for 1985. A board game. And we <clears throat> go to Rainbow Bright. Um, oops, I hit the camera. Uh, Rainbow Bright is a uh, girl's toy. I don't really know the background. Um, but I think it started as a toy and then became a cartoon. Um... Pretty popular. You saw a lot of these. Uh, girls liked them. And these were like, I guess, her friends. These little creatures. They were um, sprites. or Yeah, their sprites work with Rainbow Bright. So these are sprites. Okay. And then you get to the gear. The Rainbow Bright record player. Stereos. Pajamas. Bedding. Now we're in Transformers. Um, pretty much look like how they look now. You got the Transformers that turn into dinosaurs. Um, you have different sizes of Transformers. Look at that, a Transformer calculator watch. And a train set, a Transformers train set. Um, Transformer Rock'em Sock'em Robots, a board game, a 
pajamas, bedding. You get the same bedding configuration for everyone. They might have a tent, or but you get the duffel, the sleeping bag, the curtains, the bed. These are Tommy robots. They're remote controlled robots that could do things like roll on the floor and bring you popcorn. Um, they, I think, I don't know how popular they ultimately were, but they definitely were advertised a lot around this time. They had dogs and owl. You know, this one looks a lot like Wally. -E. These are GoBots, as I like to call them, the poor man's transformer. Um, the they're basically the same thing as Transformers. I don't know what else to tell you. I believe I had that truck. Um, this one's kind of pulling a Voltron. GoBots was like, we're gonna crib every line and. We're gonna, you can get a GoBot that can be Voltron. You're going to get a GoBot that can be Optimus Prime. Now we get to My Little Pony. Um, very popular with girls. Um, they they were little horses that lived in dollhouses. Um, kind of like, I believe they were Mattel. No, no, they're Hasbro. Um, yeah, so I guess um, the idea is you got a chunky little pony. You can comb their hair and you can play with them like they had diapers and stuff and we get the course to the bedding and the gear hug a bunch um so it's a group with a very special mission in life to hug and be hugged they come from a magical place called hug -a land and it's filled with fun and is overflowing with heartwarming hugs. And they all come with like a little miniature baby. Um, oh, it's called a huglet. So um, so they came with like a little clone or a little quato, you know, that a little. Uh, so, yeah. I don't remember these very well. I had to ask Mary if she remembers them. And, of course, you got your Hug-A-Bunch. You can outfit your girl she wanted a Hug-A-Bunch bedroom. Now we got to the incredibly popular obsession with martial arts in the 80s. Thanks to the 1984 movie The Karate Kid. And every kid wanted to be Daniel LaRusso. Some kids wanted to be Johnny. Um... And next we skip to Couch Patch Kids, still holding strong in 1985. <clears throat> you could, like American Girl and a lot of other doll things, the idea was you buy them and you dress them and then you buy different clothes and dress them and, and you could buy a little, you know, like a playpen and strollers and stuff. And then they have different variations and they have Cabbage Patch Kusas, unique little cabbage patch creatures. It's like a cat and a dog and stuff. Um, bedding again, cabbage patch themed. And we skip ahead to sectars. These would be uh, that looks a lot like Castle Grayskull. Um, this is a Kind of, I would say, like a He-Man inspired toy that if your kid kind of liked He-Man but didn't, you give him set cars. No bedding with set cars. No gear. You couldn't do a set cars bedroom. But you sure could do Barbie. And you got a lot of Barbie here for the girls. Uh, Barbie and Ken looking like 80s yuppies. Barbie in her home office, uh, all of Barbie's things, Barbie's poodle, Barbie's exercise gym, um, Barbie's patio, that was uh, Barbie's kitchen, so um, very, I mean, incredibly popular, of course, somewhat expensive back then, now we get to just like the Grab bag of stuffed animals. You got the Pink Panther, Bugs Bunny, Garfield and Odie. Lots of teddy bears. Um, Hello Kitty. 
uh, Mickey, Big Bird, you know, that, the Chickmunks. More, uh, this is Muppet Babies. They were really popular. Um, I mean, the funny thing about Muppet Babies is kids would watch that until they were like preteens because the show had movie references. This was one of the first like cartoons that, um, did like member berries and movie references and it was very hip it wasn't you know that's what what made muppet baby stand out from the other cartoons is it it tapped into pop culture so your parents could watch it too and enjoy it here we have um ewoks uh, of course the ventriloquist dummies that every store had um More doll, fantasy dolls, um, horses for, uh, and these uh, old cars. I had that one. These classic cars. I had that one. That one. I liked the classic cars when I was a kid. We have some Gone with the Wind. Um, Rhett Butler and Scarlett O'Hara dolls. Um, we have Crystal from Dynasty. Alexis from Dynasty. Christina from Dynasty, Shirley Temple, Elvis, um, and you get just your regular old baby dolls. More baby doll stuff. You see how a lot of them look like Cabbage Patch Kids, but they're not Cabbage Patch Kids. See, they were, they knew a good, if they, if some, if little funny face doll was going to sell, they were, every company was going to try to make their version of it. Raggedy Ann and Andy, uh, if you ever watched the movie Annabelle, the real Annabelle was actually a possessed Raggedy Ann doll. And actually, I don't believe in possession. It was just a Raggedy Ann doll that someone put in a glass case and said was possessed. Um, I don't believe that. So, um... It wasn't the creepy, scary-looking doll that we see in the movies. And who would have bought that doll anyway? That thing was freaky-looking. Uh, Jack in the Box is for your kids who just can't get out of the Great Depression. They just want the old classic toys. Um, you can get them for them back in 1985. Um, here's the, the big toys for, to learn tactile skills. This is um, My Buddy. And I think they came out with one called Kid's Sister later for the girls. This is the glow worm that was really popular. Um, this is the CNC. You'd pull the string and it would, you'd hear a real crackling sound that was kind of nightmare inducing, I guess. Um, it would say, you know, the cow sound like this. You know, it was really creepy. Um, but I guess that was the technology we had. I think there was actually a record inside of it. I don't know. I don't know how it worked. Um, these little puzzle blocks. Um, and we're getting into like intelligent, smart toys, typewriters, teach your kids how to have practical skills. These things, these, uh, educational toys. Uh, I had some of these when I was real young. Mm. I kind of enjoyed all the little exercises on them. And, of course, the Texas instrument stuff. This this one, um, Little Professor, was very popular. I used to think that was an owl for some reason because I was not the brightest kid. Speak and spell, speak and read, speak and math, the one no one wanted. Um... Everyone just wanted to speak and spell. And toy boxes. Now we get into like for your conservative kid who just wants um, wood themed bedrooms. You got those. Um, you got your little clubhouses. Uh, yuppie furniture for kids right here. Remember it is the 80s. Uh, kitchen sets. You know, this little car thing with a gas station. I always wanted that when I was really young. Okay. 
uh, toy food always fascinated me. I don't know about you, but, you know, I always loved the idea of toy food. I always kind of thought there would be one thing in there I could open up and eat. Like, um, then we get to actual things that you can cook, like easy bake ovens and so forth. You can actually make cookies and um, desserts and stuff. I think Easy Bake use a light bulb to heat the food or cook it. Um, doll houses. Board games. All of the different Monopoly sets. Battleship. Let's see. Lots and lots of Monopolies. Um, the Magic World of Blackstone the Magician. Rich Little's Charades Game. And uh, the life version of Trivial Pursuit. We actually had that. We played it. Uh, we had Trivial Pursuit. Everyone had Trivial Pursuit in the 80s. Everyone had this game. It was so popular. It was like the it was like the game that everyone played when they had like a a game playing party. For some reason, backgammon was really popular in the eighties, and I don't understand why. Um, you can make you can get little slot machines, or you can get little gun machines. The slot machines, I just think it'd be cool to outfit your whole house with these. You know, um, watches, wallets. What whistles? We got some Robo Force, um, and look, we are back to some Star Wars toys here, and um, here we have an interesting scene because it's showing um, these are from the animated shows. It shows um, Jantosh. Kimoil, uh, George Dusat, and Thal Jobin. All these characters were from like the cartoon show on top of the Return of the Jedi skiff. So then you got like these Star Wars droids, aliens, and the Ewoks. Some of these things are really rare now. Um, Ewok Village. This was later repurposed for the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves toys. You got your Millennium Falcon, Imperial Shuttle, Jabba the Hutt. Um, an Inspector Gadget toy. Multi-part action toys. Uh, Voltron was um, very, very popular and every coveted, you know. There were two types. There was the Voltron with um, cars and one with lions. And I think I wanted the one with lions. You could also get the command center with action figures from the show. And you just, I watched Voltron a lot. I thought it was really neat. Uh, we get to construction toys like Lincoln Logs, robot, you know, Rector sets and so forth. Lego. Wasn't as big as it is now. Now they got a whole aisle in the store. Hot Wheels. Um, here's your business reply card. The, the, the durable, tough Tonka like trucks for your your kid and um more remote control toys lots of remote control i call it screen right okay um like you have people in the stands on this racetrack which is cool train sets uh these are little Things you can paint and put in the window. These are like, you know, crafts you can make. Chalk, sidewalk chalk. I think you, you, you get these little things and you put in the oven and melted to make these little stained glass windows. More uh, tactile toys to teach coordination. Uh, army toys. People magazine board game. You get to chemistry sets, make little Walter Whites, um, carpentry sets, sleds, 
Then we get to Christmas decorations and wrapping paper actually in the catalog. Nowadays, you can buy wrapping paper anywhere. You can buy it at Dollar General and Dollar Tree. And, but back then, you know, you would go to the store, department store to buy it. Um, nativity scenes. Children's book and records and tapes. Lots of fun. And little uh, remote control pets. Oh, I'm sorry, my leg is asleep, so I bumped the phone. I just stretched my leg out. It's falling asleep. Okay, uh, karaoke, Mr. Microphone. Um, little toy cars. This little 4x4 four four was popular for little kids. There's that dog on car again with the gas pump that I wanted. Night Rider. Trikes and bikes. <clears throat> um, these little clip clop horses. Soccer stuff. Huddles were uh, pretty popular. I remember those. Sport football toys. And we get to uh, sports stuff for kids. The Goonies. Remember in the Goonies when he would have like the, the shorts over his sweats look? That was a that was the look from the eighties that you wanted. And now we're in winter wear for we're getting through the older kids, karate wear. Um you know. We're getting into the, the styles of the eighties. He, he's dressed like a grandpa there. Um, cute as a button. Varsity team. Um, still in, in children's clothes here. Looks like Mork and Mindy kind of. With that triangle on the shirt. Superman. And pajamas, nice little outfits. This is this is how we looked in the eighties. That's a very eighties design right there. This is very very typical of nineteen eighty five. Probably the most famous year of the eighties, thanks to Back to the Future. Uh, many people regard nineteen eighty five as the the year of the eighties. When the 80s had really set in, every minute of 1985, you were living in the 80s. So, um, lit literally and figuratively. So, um, all of these clothes, and once again, I see stuff that my mom would wear, and it brings back memories. She, um, like all ladies, she, you know, she got her clothes at the department store, and this is a lot of how she dressed. So... It's neat to see this stuff. Because I remember my mom looking like this. The cameo pin. And I bought her one for Christmas one year. And she really liked it. Some uh, track suits. The swatchy swatch swatches. I don't think those are real swatches. I but all the watches tried to look like swatches after a while. Pleated pants, the fluted skirts, the shoulder pads. We're getting into some Golden Girls territory here. Um, the, the scarf matching the skirt. Yeah, this is all very typical. This is this is definitely where we were at. The hat, sophisticated lady looks right here. Very very cool stuff. And we get to some slippers with Care Bears on them. Shoes. 
lots of colorful women's shoes. And these booties. Robes. And some Garfield sleepwear. Um, jewelry. Jewelry. As we say down in Alabama. Jewelry. And like class rings and stuff over here. Jewelry boxes, watches, the old pocket watch and pocket knife combo, watches, here's a little clock with your pills in it, here's a little clock with a compass and some quarters, I think you can put that in your car, um, pinky rings I guess, so the cardigans, He's got little hooks on it so he can hook things. Um, sweaters. Yep, this is what the 80s looked like. The hair, the clothes. This is 1985. The hairspray. I used to, I mean, um, by 1985, I was using hairspray or mousse, uh, which was really popular with boys. Um, we would uh, spike our hair. And we would comb the sides of it back, you know, so it would be facing backwards. Uh, put on our bugle boys or whatever, our parachute pants. And go to school. Get on the bus and go to school, you know. It was it was a different road all together. There is nothing, I mean, we have really come far in another direction. The, uh, the, this is like the Unsolved Mysteries look, you know, the Robert Stack look. Um, I don't, the three guys hanging around with their long johns look. Um, he just got a towel on. And we get to Christmas candies, the little gift sets, these little trees. They have like petty fours, cheeses, stuff like that. Beanbag chairs. And we're getting a more like home stuff. Clocks. Lighting. Let's see what we are, our lighting looks like in 1985. Uh, unicorns were real popular. I bought my mama a unicorn music box that she could wind up and it would spin around slowly. Um, TV tables because we could all watch TV while we ate. And here's your your plates and your forks and everything, your knife sets, your woks, your fondue. In case you did that, all the food processors and coffee makers, stainless steel pots and pans. Bedding, bikes, telescopes, spy glasses, roller skates, bicycles, skateboards, footballs, basketballs, darts, exercise machines. I don't know, a little tiny treadmill. Hunting stuff. Black powder enthusiast stuff. These are kits where you can make your own stuff. Telescopes to look at the eclipses. Um, outdoorsy stuff. Chainsaws. So much stuff in the 80s. And this was life. This was the things we had. Microwaves. Sewing machines. Vacuums. Camera sets. Cameras were a big deal. There was no other way to take pictures without a camera. No phones, 
No iPads. And we got to computer stuff. Typewriters, word processors. You every house had to have a typewriter. And a tape recorder too. You may, I mean that these were things that you would find in the house. You used these things. Every house had a tape recorder because sometimes y'all wanted to record a conversation uh, for memories. Like if we had everyone over for Christmas, we would want to record um, the, the the Christmas meet, the Christmas gathering. The, you know, take the tape out and write Christmas 1985 on it. You could listen to the sounds of your family. All of this stuff was used and. All of it's obsolete now, but it, it and there's a little tiny television, um, these stereo systems. Big TVs. Big expensive TVs. <laughs> well. This has been, um, Three weeks and three catalogs. Today's Christmas, and um, this is the, my last Christmas catalog I'm going to show you for 2022. So, a lot of memories, and I hope you enjoyed these uh, this series of videos, and um, and I hope you have a what's left of the day. I hope you have a great Christmas, a happy New Year. I'll be back, and um, tune in, and we'll get together again. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, the best to all your family, peace and happiness, safety, and laugh and try to make the most of your day. Bye.